right. Hey, welcome to church today. My name is Andrew. I'm the lead pastor. For those of you that do not know me, hey, I want to welcome everybody that is watching us right now on YouTube Live, on our YouTube channel, and who's going to listen to us on our podcast. Hey, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening and staying connected to Passionate Life Church. All right. Hey, we are in a series called Treasure Hunt. Man, we're on part five today. And today is a Okay, today is part five, but it's part 5A. Next week is going to be part 6B, okay? It's literally a continuation of this message, okay? Um, and, and now, last week we, we were talking about treasuring your own yard, right? Treasuring what God has already placed in your life. Uh, man, because he's got more for us, right? And he just doesn't have one treasure. He's got multiple treasures for our life. Not just one diamond. He has acres of diamonds for our life, right? And today, we're going to talk about something. It's a massive subject, and that's why we need two weeks to talk about it. But this subject is the key that actually opens up the treasure chest, and that key is obedience, Okay, so, so the title of the message is Treasure Obedience, and I was watching this special on the Bible on Amazon Prime. Um, it, it took me a couple times to get through it. It's about an hour and a half long. It's got really good information, um, but I was finishing up on Friday, and I love when God does this. He just kind of confirms what I'm going to be talking about, and this, this scholar uh, who's probably got four doctorates behind his name, he said this one simple little thing. I don't even remember his name. He said this. He said, if you're not preaching obedience, you're not preaching the gospel. And if you're not preaching the gospel, then you're not leading people to Jesus. And so in the most simplistic terms today, I want to lead us closer to Jesus today, okay? And, and this is a harder message, okay, today. And, and the reason why I preach these harder messages, these challenging messages, is because as your pastor, I love you. Man, I love every single person that walks through that doors because I know that God has ordained you and placed you in this place. It is not of a mistake that you're sitting here this morning. God has placed you here for a purpose, and I believe he's got a word for us today. Amen? Amen. Come on, let's pray, and we'll get into God's word. Father, I thank you for this moment. I thank you for every person that's in this room today, God. you got a purpose. you got a plan for their lives today. God, I thank you that... Man, we can gather together in a free country and talk about obedience, God. And, and, and Father, I just pray that you would open our hearts, you would open our minds for the next 30 minutes, and that this moment would matter for each and every one of us in this room. Jesus, we love you, we glorify you, and everybody said amen and amen. And so today, I have five points, but they're really not points. They're actually thoughts, but I put numbers by them. To really confuse you, okay? Um, just for those of you taking notes, uh, you, you can kind of, you know, structure your, your, my thoughts, okay? Um, what does it mean to obey God? Okay, let, let, let's just start there. What, what does it mean to obey God? What it means to obey God, okay? In, in really simple terms, it means that we try our very best to live by this book, Okay? the word of God. We, we try our very best to live by what scripture says, not just our favorite scriptures, but the whole word of God, okay? Now let me just put your mind at ease, all right? Nobody is nailing this, okay? Nobody's like, yep, got it, right? Like nobody is nailing this. We're all on a journey. We're all trying our best to submit and obey the words in this this book, okay? So let's, let's just put our mind at ease, all right? Thought number one today, thought number one today, the struggle with obedience, okay? The struggle is real, right? The struggle of obedience is real. And the reason is, is we've got two things going against us, okay? We've got two things going against us. The first thing is we have a real enemy named the devil who is whispering lies in our minds to try to to get us to be disobedient, okay? He does not want us to open this treasure chest of treasures, right? He, he doesn't want us to obey God with our lives, and so he's lying to us to try to get us to be 
disobedient. And we see this in the garden, right? In Genesis uh, 1 and 2, we, we see this in the garden where Satan comes to Adam and Eve, and, and God tells Adam and Eve, you can have anything you want. Do whatever you want, okay? Ride a lion if you want. You know what I mean? Like, it's, do whatever you want, just don't eat from this tree. That's the only instruction that God gave Adam and Eve. Do whatever you want, just don't eat from this one tree, right? And what happens? <laughs> they listen to the lies of the devil, and they took a bite of that fruit. They were disobedient, okay? Which leads us into the second uh, thing that we're, we're fighting against. One, it's the devil. Two, our flesh. We're fighting against our own flesh. And I can prove it to you, okay? I've never met a parent, okay? I've never met a parent that, that, that has come up to me and said, listen, I had to tell Johnny the other day how to be disobedient. I literally had to sit Johnny down and I said, listen, Johnny, when I tell you to do something three or four times, just completely ignore me. Pretend I'm not even talking. And then after the fifth or sixth time I'm raising my voice now, just look up at me and say, what? <laughs> well, like we've never had to teach our kids how to be rebellious or be disobedient. It is our human nature. And I don't know why God designed us and created us like this, but he, he created us with free will. And that's why he allowed Adam and Eve to take a bite from the fruit. And because of their mistake because of their disobedience now we struggle one with the devil trying to get us to disobey because he does not want us to discover the treasure that God has in store for us and then our human nature our flesh does not want to submit or obey okay which leads us into our second thought and that is there is a constant desire for us to become our own gods now, some of you are like, no way, I don't believe that. I would never worship myself. <laughs> Listen, I can prove to you <laughs> that we love ourselves. If we, okay, if we went and, and, and we traveled back in time, okay, and we talked to people in the 1920s, okay, 1920s, they're living in the roaring 20s, right? And you told them, all right, you told them that 100 years from now, most of the population on planet Earth is going to have a page dedicated just to them. And on this page, and on this page, they're going to have hundreds, sometimes thousands of pictures of just themselves. Selfie, selfie, hashtag no filter, even though it took them two hours to take the picture, right? Like, right? like they would be like, what? Like Jesus says this in the book of Revelation. He says that in the last days, people would be lovers of themselves. Guys, we, we love ourselves. We, we love ourselves, and, and, and this is a struggle of us wanting to become our own gods and do things our own way. Jesus says this in Luke 9, 23. Jesus says this. He said this to a crowd. He says, if any of you wants to be my follower, it's really important to recognize the language Jesus is using there. He, he isn't using, he doesn't say believer, Okay. He specifically uses that word follower. And the reason why is because the demons believe in Jesus, okay? The demons believe that there is a God and they, they are afraid of him, right? And so Jesus specifically uses, if you want to be my follower, there's, there's a difference there. You must turn from your selfish ways, take up your cross daily, and follow me. He says, Take up your cross daily, not monthly, not weekly, every single day. So, so what does that mean to take up your, your cross, okay? Our cross is not our job, okay? Like, like you're going to, even though you don't like, you might not like your job, right? That is not your cross 
to bear, okay? You choose to work that job to, to make a certain amount of money so you can pay for your house and, and, and food and, and all that kind of stuff, right? You don't have to work that job. So that, that's not your cross to bear. School, okay? Some of you teenagers or, or, or college students, school is not your cross to bear, right? Like that's something that you choose to do, to educate yourself, right? Um, being around certain family members, okay? Not your cross to bear. Some of you are like, Pastor, if you knew my auntie, okay? Like, let me tell you, that is not your cross to bear. What is Jesus talking about? Jesus is talking about people need to see the cross in you. People need to see the cross, and I'm not talking about a necklace or a tattoo or an earring, okay? What Jesus is saying is that when people look at you, they need to see the cross of Jesus in you. And we've been talking about this theme of the overflowing in the Holy Spirit, that, that when people encounter you, they should encounter the love of God. When people encounter you, they should encounter the peace of God. They should encounter the joy of God, the gentleness, the kindness of God, right? When people look at us, they should see the cross. They should see Jesus. And that's what it means to follow Jesus, to, to put away our selfish desires and to follow Jesus. Jesus even takes it a step further in Matthew 6, 24. He says this, no one can serve two masters. And, and listen, there's no, there's no third option, okay? Either you are the master of your own life or God's your master. There's no third option. Either you are following Jesus or you are following yourself, okay? Either you are following God or you're following your own ideas and plans, okay? So he says, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and and money. Okay, so to understand the fullness of what Jesus is talking about here, because yes, he's referencing money, but the reason why he's referencing money is what you use money for, right? Because you can easily serve money to your own benefit, right? And use money to just make your life more comfortable. I mean, that's what we do in America, right? We want a bigger house. We want a nicer car. We want to eat better food, right? And so that's why we work, and that's why we have money, right? And so Jesus is saying, you can act, this can actually become your God of just making your life more, more comfortable. So to, to, to really fully understand what, what Jesus is, is talking about in this one passage, you need to understand what he's talking about in Matthew chapter 6, okay? And this goes into my third, thought, th my third thought, and that is motivation matters, okay? Motivation matters, okay? And in and, and the beginning of chapter, Matthew chapter 6, Jesus is talking about giving, giving to the poor. He's talking about praying. He's talking about fasting, right? And he's not just talking about those subjects. He's talking about why we should do them. Motivation matters. Not only does obedience matter, but the motivation of why we obey God matters too, okay? And so let me give you this example. In the temple... They would, have this, they would have this offering box in, in the front, okay? So it would be like us taking one of those offering boxes and, and, and putting it on a stand, right? And, and putting it up front right here, okay? And then we would have um, the, someone play the piano or maybe they had someone play the harp, right, for 10 minutes, right? And, and, and then they would, have, they would have people come down, right? They would have people come down in the synagogue and put money in front of everybody in the offering box. It's, it's almost like passing the plate. Anyway, um, I mean, you want to talk about an awkward time in the service, right? Well, when everybody would come down and put their money in the plate. Come on, you know what I'm, people were watching, right? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, Joe didn't put any money in the offering plate today. Mm-hmm. But he bought a new boat this week, you know what I'm saying? Right? I mean, you want to talk about an awkward, you know, time in, in the synagogue. They would come and they would give. And the Pharisees 
would come and, and, and they, would, they would make it rain into the offering, right? Like, like they would splash coins. Like, like, they, they, like, you know what I mean? They would make sure that everybody said, look at how much money I'm giving, right? And Jesus says, that's all the reward that they get right there. Because they, they were doing it because they wanted people to think that they're awesome. Like, like, look at me. I have sweet robes and I give lots of money, right? Like, like think I'm awesome. And Jesus is like, that's your only reward right there. Is that people think you're awesome. And then, he, and then he talks about prayer, right? The, 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 these guys used to walk around and they would pray for eight hours a day. Like, like just, just, that's crazy. Like, they would pray for eight hours a day and they would, they would pray these eloquent prayers that were rooted in the word of God. I mean, they memorized scripture. And so they would just walk around and, and say these prayers out loud. And Jesus is saying, that's all the reward that you're going to get because you're doing it because you want people to think you're awesome. So not only is obedient, does obedience matter to God, but the motivation of why, of why we do things matters to God. Yes, we should give, but the motivation of why we're giving matters. Yes, we should pray, but the motivation of why we're praying matters to God. Obedience is that key that opens the treasure. But man, our heart also matters. What we do with the treasure when God gives it to us. Thought number four. Thought number four. The relationship of obedience. The relationship of obedience. This is, man, this is crucial. Have you you ever had a bad boss or or manager over you, right, who uh, was unethical and, 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 you know, basically they they tell you to do something that they would never do, right? Don't follow my example. Just do it because I told you to do it, right? It's hard to obey them, right? It's hard to obey them because you know their life, you know they're unethical, and, and, and so it, it, it's difficult to submit to them and surrender to them because you know their life is not good, right? And so it can be a struggle to do that. Well, we obey a father named God. Just, just let that sink it. We, we obey a father named God. He, he's a father first. The disciples were always like, Jesus, how should we pray? How, how should we address the big guy, right? Like, how should we address him? And Jesus says what? He says, you address him as our father. Our father. Matthew 7, 11. Matthew 7, 11. Jesus says this. So if you sinful people, and I love this because this is the lighter version, right? There's other translations that says, you wicked people, you evil people, right? Jesus says, so you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children. Okay, I know how to give good gifts to my, to my boys, okay? I have an eight-year-old and a six-year-old, and I know how to give good gifts because I know their likes and their dislikes, okay? Okay. Um, Grandma sent us some money for Valentine's Day for the kids, and so we went and we bought the Pokemon game and the the Pokemon cards, okay? So that's happening in our house. Please pray for me, okay? Um, Cards everywhere. And uh, they literally said that night, you know, before their prayers, they're like, Dad, you are the greatest dad of all time. Dad, you are awesome. And I know the reason why they said that. They said that because I went and got Pokemon cards for them, right? Because of what I blessed them and because of what I gave them, okay? I know how to give good gifts to my kids because I know them. This is what Jesus says in the next, the next statement. He says, how much more will your heavenly Father give good gifts to those who ask him? And I think it can be a struggle for us because I know some of you, you like that. I know some of you immediately when I when I said a father named God, you disconnected from me, like immediately. And it's because you had a terrible example as an earthly one, 
And so there's an immediate disconnect between you. Oh, when you say father, because maybe your father was absent. Maybe he was abusive. Maybe he was a drunk. Maybe he was there but wasn't really there. Do you know what I'm saying? And, and so there's, there's this immediate disconnect between you and the father. But, man, Jesus says we need to address him as father. For This is who he is. Because I, I think when we think of God, we think that he's sitting on a throne and he's holding up, you know, lightning bolts waiting to strike us, right? And, and that's why Jesus says, no, 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 you need to view him as a father, a loving father. Now, listen to you. Listen to me. Some of you that, that have struggled with the father disconnect, okay, because you had a terrible example I just want to tell you on behalf of God, okay, that I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was not the plan for your life. God's plan is, it was to, to have a, a loving father in your life that would raise you, that, w- that would give you good gifts, that would give you that great example. And so that was not God's design for your life to be raised with a terrible example, and, and I just, man, I am sorry. God is sorry that you had to go through that. But listen to me. We all have a perfect father. We, that's why Jesus says, man, he's perfect, and he loves you so much, and he's got great things in store for you. If you would just take the key of obedience and stick it in the treasure chest, he's got great things in store for you because he's nothing like your earthly dad. And listen, those of you that had good earthly dads, he's still way better than those guys. And so understanding, and that's why Jesus is like, man, think about him as a dad. Think about him as a father first, our father. And, and man, I remember this one, one time, I, I was just going through a rough patch in my life, and, uh, man, God gave me this vision, and I think I was like 30 years old at the time, and, and I had this vision of, of crawling up, into my father's lap. Just God was this just giant figure and me as some 30-year-old man just crawling up in his lap and him just holding me. And, and, and that's the image that Jesus was trying to convey to his disciples. Listen, he is a dad and he is there for you every moment of your life and he loves you and he's got great gifts in store for you. Our Father, and He's a Father first, and then He's our God. All right, number five. The fifth thought, the grace bridge. The grace bridge. Now, let's talk about what grace is not, okay? Because we, we can be confused sometimes what grace, what grace is and what grace is not. Grace is not permission for us to live however we want to live and do whatever we want to do, okay? Grace is not, you know, I, just, I like some scriptures in the Bible, but not all. So I'm just going to pick my favorites and um, just do those, you know? Um, not how it works. <laughs> not how surrender and following Jesus works, right? He, he, man, grace is not so we can do whatever we want to do and, and, and go and party and club on Saturday night and come to church on Sunday, okay? And saying, I'm under grace. Okay, that's, that's not what grace is. Let me give you an example, okay? And you won't ever forget this example because first service was completely grossed out by it. So that's what I'm gonna use again. It would be like me taking a piece of poop turd, and putting it in a Snickers wrapper, okay, and me giving you the Snickers bar and saying, enjoy the candy bar. It looks like a candy bar, right? It, it, it looks exactly like a candy, it looks like a Snickers bar, it's sealed up in a, in a, in a, in a Snickers wrapper, I just called it a candy bar. I said, hey, enjoy the candy bar, right? 
But when you open the candy bar and you take a bite of the candy bar, you'll know really quick it's not a candy bar. Listen, we can label ourselves whatever we want to, right? We can label ourselves a Christian. We, we can tell people that we go to church, right? But what God says is that he will taste and see. Jesus says, man, I will know my followers by their fruit. And, and man, we just, we, if we're going to follow Jesus, we, we need to act and look and sound and love and like a Christian, like a follower of Jesus. Listen, listen, I can, I can go buy an authentic Nuggets jersey, okay? Denver Nuggets. And I can wear it around, okay? And I can tell everybody that I see, I play for the Nuggets. I'm averaging 20 points a game. Now, if you watch a game, now, I don't know how you would do that because they're never on TV. <laughs> Unless you have direct TV. Anyway, you wouldn't see me. You wouldn't see me in a game. He'd be like, where's Andrew? I thought he said he was. I'm never in the game because I'm actually not on the team doing anything. Just because I... People tell us that what they are. That's why Jesus says, man, it's the fruit. It's how we taste. It's how the, oh, the Holy Spirit is overflowing in our lives. Grace doesn't give us permission to do whatever we want. This is what grace does. Grace bridges the gap between our shortcoming and God's overcoming. Come on, that, that's so good. I'm going to read it again. Grace bridges the gap between our shortcoming and God's overcoming. Let me give you another visual, okay? Let's pretend that this is a cliff, okay? And, and, and off of this cliff is a 100-foot drop, okay? And, and the goal is for me to jump and, and, and get to the soundboard all the way in the back of the room. Okay, because 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 the, the gorge goes all the way back to the soundboard. Okay, and 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 now listen, I was I was all county and track. Okay, not to brag. All right, you know, nineteen feet, nineteen feet. Okay, not to brag. You know, um, and so no human being, listen to me, no human being could physically run and jump and make it that far. Okay, and that's the point right? That's the point. No human being could physically jump and reach the purpose and the plan that God has for their life without a bridge of grace. Proverbs 24, 16 says this, for though the righteous fall seven times. Now listen, perfection is not the goal. Righteousness is. Okay, what's righteousness? Righteousness is being in right standing with God. Okay, there are going to be months where we fall seven times. There's going to be weeks we fall seven times. There's going to be days we fall seven times. There's going to be hours we fall seven times. There's going to be a minute <laughs> where we fall seven times. And, and, and here's, here's the difference, right? Here's the difference between someone who is righteous and someone who is not righteous, right? When we fall and we mess up, we use the bridge of grace to get up. You see, we're on the bridge of grace because we're moving forward to the purpose and the plan and the destiny that God has for our life because we believe that our daddy has great things in store for us. So I'm moving towards the treasure. And there's going to be days where, man, I'm, I'm down, right? I'm down, right? Sickness has got me, right? Uh, my job has got me. My marriage has got me. My kids have got me, right? And there's times when, 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 when we get down. But, man, grace, grace says, okay, come on, get up. Keep going. Man, I still have a purpose and a plan and a destiny for your life. Keep moving forward because as you move forward, you will discover the treasure that I have for you. Grace is a bridge. 
right? None of us can, can, can on our physical strength, none of us can, can become righteous. None of us can get in right standing on our physical attributes, right? There were some guys called the Pharisees that nailed this. You want to talk about a bunch of dudes that nailed it? They nailed the, the Jewish law. I mean, they did everything. And Jesus is like, you guys got it wrong. You got it, you got it wrong. It's because your, your motivation is wrong. Right? Some of us, our motivation to say that we're a Christian is to hope, hopefully we make it to heaven, right? Jesus says your motivation should be people should see the cross in your life because there's hurting and broken people in your life everywhere you go. And they need the only thing that's going to save them. The only thing that is going to help them is Jesus. And so... Jesus is like, man, I need you to carry your cross every day because I'm going to bring people in your life that need to experience Jesus through you, that, that people need to experience the cross through you. But the wicked stumble when calamity strikes. The wicked stay down. Satan wants us to keep us down. He does not want us to get up. He wants to keep us down in our sickness or our health issues. He wants to keep us down in our relationship struggles. He wants to keep us down in our financial issues. But grace says, no, 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 no. The treasure's still there. The treasure's not gone. Come on, you're on the bridge of grace. Just, just get up. Keep moving forward. And so as, as we continue on this bridge of grace of obedience, right, the struggle no longer is with obedience but with how I am going to become an overcomer, right? Because we're going to fall short. Our shortcomings, we're going to fall short every single day. But we serve a God who is an overcomer. And when we fall on the bridge of grace, we will overcome. And so when the next time a struggle comes, right? The next time a struggle comes, it's not about, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? This is horrible. The thought should be, okay, I know who my daddy is. And my daddy can beat up anybody else's daddy. And so no matter what I'm struggling with today, my daddy has overcome it. I just need to stay on this bridge of grace. And I'm going to fall, but I'm going to get back up. And I'm going to keep moving forward. Because I know that he has treasure for my life. I know he's got treasure for me. And I know I have to be obedient. I know that God's way is better than my way. Listen to me, and I'm going to talk about this next week more. The greatest thing that I ever did in my life, man, I was a drug addict for seven years. And the greatest thing that I ever did was go all in on Jesus. I had no money. I had no job. I was not a prize. And when I went all in on Jesus, Jesus, the first thing Jesus spoke to me, he said, Andrew, if you remain faithful to me, if you'll just stay obedient to me, I will bless you beyond your imagination. Now listen to me. Awesome. But God did not turn me into Bruce Wayne. Right? And I think some of us, we have this, this idea that, that, man, when I become a Christian, I'm going to be Bruce Wayne and, and uh, you know, God's going to bless me with riches and this big house and I'm not really going to have to work. I'm just going to be, you know, wealthy. You know what I mean? Like, and then, uh, you know, and then when, when I go fight, right, when I have a battle, God's going to show up as my sidekick savior, as Robin. And we, we, we have the tendency to only go to God when things are bad and we treat God like some type of sidekick savior, like he's Robin in our life. Let me tell you, God is not Robin. He's not Batman either. He is a savior. And the reason why we 
Now we can obey, and again, the struggle is real. But the motivation is that God will never ask you to do something that his son never overcame. I mean, he sent his only begotten son to die for you and me. He, 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 and I love it. He lived 30 years as a normal person. He walked in our shoes. He experienced all the temptations that we experienced, but he lived a perfect life. Why? So this moment right now, whatever you're struggling with, we know that our daddy is an overcomer. And no matter what you're going through, okay, don't stay down. Get up. You're on, the, you're on the bridge of grace. God still has treasure for you. Keep moving forward. Come on, let's bow our heads and close our eyes this morning. Maybe today you'd say, Pastor, I need to take the first step of obedience and give my life to Jesus and become a follower of Christ. Or maybe you've, man, you've been following your own way. You've been following your own ideas and your own plans. And today, you, you need to submit your life to Jesus. I'm telling you, it's the best choice you'll ever make. Every head down, I just ask that every head is down and eyes closed. This is your personal declaration of faith this morning. If that's you, just slip up a hand. I just want to pray with you today. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, you can put your hands down. And I would just ask that we would all repeat this prayer this morning as we help those making the greatest decision of their life today. Dear Jesus, I thank you for what you did on the cross. And I ask this morning that you would forgive me of all my sin, that you would come into my life and be my Lord and King. And from this day forward, I will follow you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, let's give them a hand clap today. Heaven is rejoicing.